Hello and Let's welcome everybody to episode 62.5 of the Namasp Interrupts Me during the introduction podcast. You want to do it also again? Also known as the inventory where we uh, strip and play poker uh, independently from each Night. other. They yeah, just happen exactly. to coincide occasionally. Oh. I'm, yeah. I'm your host, Banana, and I like Maya Gisborne. I'm your host, host, my co-host, Namask, who likes girls with personality disorders. <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, it's part of the Spanish canon. Uh, anyway, and, and so. with us is our guest Wibbly Warble, who is not kill, oh. and he likes. Uh, he made a girl with a personality disorder yeah. in darkness. <laughs> who's he's going to talk about now? So yeah. Wibbly, Dar- darkness Konosuba. Mm. Yeah, so we're going to hop right into it. We we're going to finish up this testing roster, and yeah, maybe maybe go. have an extra time, but probably not. Darkness, let's go. God bless Natsumi Akatsuki. He's the uh, writer of Kanesuba. But, like, man, he himself said Darkness is the hardest character to write for um, for him. And I, I understand that because... He's so fucking degenerate. Yeah, so it's like you have to hit that fine line between being degenerate enough, but not being, like over the top to the point where they just become a 100% gag character with, like, no substance, you know? Um, or, and also, so you don't, like, make the ratings of, like, go way up on the show. <laughs> but the, um, the big thing is that, um, and one of the things that makes it even harder is that in the show, normally Darkness is someone who has, like, a, it's a joke where people often, like, immediately like start backpedaling when she gets into that mode but here she is in a situation that would be almost like a fantasy to her and on top of that there's characters that actually express interest or play along with it to a degree and it's like that makes it even harder to keep that balance going to a degree so i kind of let the bounce slip a bit more not I'm trying not to go too far but slip a bit more because it's just very in character but you know it's it's hard because it's like you know it that that mix is difficult but at the same time i'm very passionate about the character so i'm enjoying writing but yeah it's really it's really good man thank you i'm always like paranoid whether i go too far in one direction or the other so i'm still working on you know, all that but so far i'm having a lot of fun with it but yeah i think uh i've really enjoyed i've really enjoyed darkness i i think like of the Kono Super characters, like nice, nice spoon clinking on your chicken noodle soup. I'm so sorry, it's delicious. Um, anyway, but I really like dark. I really like your portrayal. Yeah, how, many, how many different meals has like Namasp consumed on the podcast? I try, I try to make a point of doing a different one every single time. Um, sometimes it's alcohol is the meal, but I think uh, Darkness is really good. I really enjoy the model. I think her writing is really strong. Um, Definitely keep going with her. I look forward to seeing like how the interactions with Leon shake out. But I also I, I just think she's really well written. Um, Darkness in Konosuba is uh, kind of touchy. I think the thing that I would recommend for her, just like if if anything, Wibbly is just like don't don't let yourself get memed into non-existence. Like texture with some other you know the other facets of her character. Oh yeah, at, at least in the first part of the game, and you, and you don't like run afoul of that. But that's all I gotta say. Um, honestly, I hate, I hate to like, kind of like pin it there, but I think she's, I think she's good. I trust you to do a good job here. I just look forward to seeing more lines from her. And I think the one issue I would say is critical is just, it doesn't always feel like I would like to see more agency from darkness and interacting with others before it's just like, kinda, cause she's such a bottom. She receives everything yeah. that I want to see her like, you know, interacting, engage with others proactively oh, too, yeah. which I think you're trying to do, but just as a heads up. One thing I noticed is uh, when when I was at, at a point where I was super active, targets were really slow, so I kind of didn't get a chance to... I, I, I like to write targets, but I also like to write... I'm the kind of person who likes to write targets when I'm like, no, I'm going to be getting interactions back instead. sometimes instead of like throwing them out in the ether, but I do need to kind of throw some stuff out there more. I think you do right I'm now. Sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, it's been a busy month for me. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, um... It's one of the big things uh, I'm thankful, first off, because one of the things I love about like the show and the uh, and just I love comedy stuff in general. I like how expressive when characters are super expressive, like to a point where they're over the top, which makes can make posing really fun for them and uh, which is great. But uh, yeah, no, um, 
I'm so thankful. Like the only reason I'm able to get to writing is the community effort to get the model fixed and working. I have, just, I have to give big thanks for Nord for helping organize that and everything. It's just everyone who helped out. Yeah. So what about you, Spinal? What do you think? Contrary to my normal bad cop routine, Darkness is the kind of character that's just like so good and, and well executed that there's not a whole lot to, to nitpick. Nice. Like, this is, I mean, uh, last time, you know, we covered characters like uh, Alloy, and I, I think I'll say this kind of the same thing about uh, Dunbon, where they're a little too, like, composed and professional and, like, well mannered that it can be hard to, like, first, like, decide and on and, like, project a sexuality onto them. Where, whereas, like, Darkness is just a perfect fit for this game. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you don't need to make up what her sexuality is. You fucking know immediately what you're going to do with her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and one of the things <laughs> and, that I find And the funny, player gets it immediately. I, and I like seeing characters. I like seeing both a mix of characters. Like, it's sometimes, you know, it's fun seeing characters get, in, like, get interested in it, but it's also fun sometimes when the characters are just, like, okay, what the fuck am I getting myself into with this character? You know, that's a lot of fun yeah, too. Yeah, like, I don't think, like, it's not that, like, Alloy or Dunbon are bad choices, but it's harder. It's a lot harder work to, like, def- define what the premise is going to be and how you're going to make it work. Yeah, I definitely have an advantage with Whereas Darkness. In the darkness sense. is yeah. a sex joke. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. that makes the, the approach easy. I'm not saying you, like it was just a layup and you didn't have to no, work I hard. Like, she, she, she's really well done. She's like nice, really cute model. It's really expressive. She's got a really unique look at different stages, like with the full body suit and like all the little lines for like the muscle tone. Like she, you know, she looks like she's you know she's got like kind of a, a bulky crusader look, which is good. But yeah, and like she's got like a strong voice. You know. You know like her dialogue really stands out on a table. She's like, you can always tell what she's thinking. <laughs> like you can probably guess what she's thinking, but <laughs> actually, but yeah, like, she's just a, like a super good fit. Like she, I mean, that's the thing, like, uh, especially compared to like some of the other characters I was, I was testing with, like she had so much dialogue about sex and body talk. And that made it easy to, for for you to write lines i'm sure because it's a sexual environment yeah and one thing so my mentality i did this with uh, megman as well but like my mentality with writing characters especially is when you get i get to the like the forfeit stages and past that i love writing way more dialogue than is necessary because i kind of see that as being almost like the reward for the player so to speak so I like to make it so there's so much variety that each time you play, you're likely going to see something new. So I did a lot of that, and it made it very easy to write that stuff. <laughs> yeah. The only, the only things I want to say are, like, maybe her outfit could use a little more, like, shading and detailing. Like, the, sh- the sheath of her sword is just, like, a rectangle. Yeah. Same with, like, her gauntlets, stuff like that. That's the only thing that stands out is, like, a little under-detailed. You can kind of see all the Kisuke shapes. Yeah, I, there's definitely a few points that could use a touch up. For the moment, though, with the amount of effort that went into her, I'm focusing on the writing. I'm like, I'll get to that when yeah. I'm closer to done. Like even, even just just like having like some shadows on it or stuff. Yeah, to make it look a little more three D. The only other thing is is yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm not 100 percent sure how to target her because again, she's like so strong on her own in terms of like the premise. It's like I almost don't want to like get in the way because. It can be hard sometimes. It's like, what else do you say besides, like, what the fuck's the matter with you? Yeah, that's the other thing that I know can be a bit challenging because she does. It's once again, that's where it becomes such a challenge, especially in this kind of environment. Yeah. I'd love to have uh, Megaman is like my. I is they're like polar opposites in that Megaman is kind of a lot easier to write casual conversation and banter with, but where uh, with Darkness it can be a bit harder because I have to take into account first off the fact that. Like, I don't want it. I need to adjust in a way where she's not constantly like jumping back and forth between uh, crazy and then like, oh, talking casually. And then, yeah. get, uh, and so I'm, I've had some ideas. I don't know whether using variables or something to see if there's 
any possibilities of like controlling that a little bit more to add more of that. But yeah, it's a difficult balancing act. But uh, oh, oh, she definitely uh, has a lot to say outside of the uh, horny meter. Well, what what do you want characters to target her about? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So I guess one of the, some of the things is so she she's alluded to a few times, but she has an interesting like origin, like how she got into the whole situation to begin with. Um, and she's mentioned she's mentioned that a few times. Some ways to get her to. Uh, like start slightly talking on that path can be mentioning things like wealth or nobility or like uh, upper class or things like that. Um, and uh, on top of that, she uh, is actually very, um, she's very, I mean, you've probably seen this a bit well, she's very focused on staying in shape and kind of like being like tough uh, and like durable. <laughs> But um, and also on top of that, she's actually she has a very she's actually religious, believe it or not. You um, she she has a uh, God that she specifically worships that is actually like a isn't like some degenerate God. So that's also surprising. It's it's not awful. No, it's not. It's not. I can, I can see um, I can see Maya in particular interacting with darkness more on the Yeah. And last thing worth mentioning is just I'm waiting for the day when this happens because it it'd be so hard to get her to mention this on her own. It either have to be through trickery or through um, using uh, or through another Kanesuba character helping out. But if you get her real name, you that is the one thing she does not like being embarrassed with. And that's like when you see her suddenly switch from enjoying it to being like, no, please stop. Like for real. <laughs> what what's what's her real name? Latina. Lalatina. Lalatina? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like Maya in Darkness Interacting is like I think Maya could like communicate a lot about boundaries with darkness, I guess. And just like darkness is like being a mega masochist. That's why I desperately want to consider that variable system because I want to be able to have both sides that are fun, but it's so hard because she slips into that mode so early because like darkness. So it's kind of like, but then also it's, I, I would love to get feedback and ideas on all this too. Cause then also the variable system, it's you get into the question of like, uh, what if it like takes too long or like, I don't know. It's, it's a lot. So I'm always looking for ideas cause I want to try and make this as best as I can. All, all my, Characters are grounded enough to the point where if you put them with someone who's really cartoony and over the top, they'll they'll probably just like disengage because it's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm not touching this one. Yeah. But, but at, a, at a certain point. So I think there's like something you could like, there's something to be said for like exor- exercise and, and combat. I don't know. Like it's kind of like maybe with Arafuda where Maya will feel she just, Darkness is kind of just making a mockery of it. Or, you know, kind of has ulterior motives. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that's that's about it. I've realized we kind of got around the time we were uh, thinking about, so we can move on, but unless you have any other last things to say, but yeah, as I'm enjoying writing for her. And... Darkness has a much bigger sword. Yeah. She's got bigger tits, too. Yeah. Presumably, I don't know what the official measurements are. For uh, Darkness? Yeah. Oh, so funny thing, uh, real quick. So there were two different animators during the anime that were swapped back and forth, and they both had very different opinions on how to draw breasts. Um, and so you would see some episodes where they were overly exaggerated, some episodes where they were like more natural. She's normally kind of on the larger side, but not as ridiculously huge. Like if you're looking at the source material as some of the episodes show because of that animation switch. Am I, am I going to have to post like alternate animation studio Maya? Like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all good. You know, like it happens. It happens in every show. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Sounds like our, you know, darkness is a big hit. Looking forward to seeing more ongoing develop from her. Oh yeah. Get, get a little of that. Uh, that's that's interesting. Um, okay, so let's talk about Nagatoro. Um, we are coming up a little bit on time, but you know it's always good to give the guests time to speak about the character. Let's talk about Nagatoro. Um, sorry, Nord Dunban will be in the next episode, along with uh, Nagatoro, also from Komi-san. 
Yeah, also, yeah. Just like Aichi. Uh, yeah, so Nagatoro was written by Lockett with, and also artist by Lockett. I, man, between Aichi and Nagatoro, it's just like, it's baffling how good these like, first attempts are. Like, Nagatoro is just something else. I mean, we, we, we just had the, the turbo sub, and I guess now we have the turbo yeah. dom. Yeah. Which actually, I would love to see some interactions with them uh, on that. Point. Yeah, that would be fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So, which we started to, but I did put them together, but I guess it was mostly filters. Yeah, because I don't, I don't think they target each other specifically yet. Yeah, we don't have, we don't have much interactions just yet. We're working on it, but yeah, no model on point, personality on point. And Anim- all the animations, fucking amazing. The creative uh, ideas for like the different stages, just beautiful. We were actually at one point. It's looking like it might not fall through, so uh, go through or not for a long time, if at all. So I might as well mention this. We were originally looking at an idea of having Nagatoro kick her shoe off and smack Darkness in the face with it on accident. <laughs> Logistically, it became difficult, but we thought that would be funny. Just, just have her like fling it straight up, and then it comes down on darkness. That's what I was saying, but like I think they were looking for some. I, I don't know. It's kind of trying to th- figure out how to make it work where we're both uh, uh, down for it, or uh, what's the word? Um, not appeased, not a ha- ha- happy with it. I guess yeah, that's it. But yeah, beautiful, well done character. And for an end mass, I was talking about like darkness shoe hitting the face. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. That would be funny as shit. I know. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, like I, I think I, I will admit I was very skeptical about Nagatoro. I I've mostly known Nagatoro from memes and I don't care for the character archetype much, but I think her presentation is is extremely extremely funny. Like I not because I'm like, oh man, I like to get bullied by Nagatoro as much as it's just like I, I think her the way she engages with the player is really fascinating. And I think her personality is just so OTT that it, it like wraps you, around. Did you just say you're not into this personality type? What? Who the fuck are no, you? You're right. God, you know, sorry. I, I lost character for a moment. Yeah, no, I just want her to step on me. This is, this is Gremlin incarnate. Like, yeah, I want her to step on me. But um, I think it's part of it is because it's like taking her out of the environment with the character that that's her main focus of being like yeah. that, having that personality around. But yeah. I think like I think she's super cool, and I I do think like the one thing is like I'm not you know ironically given that I wrote Natsuki, the fixation on player can be a little bit much sometimes, but I think like there's plenty of room for other characters to interact with her, and I, I think she's just really good. I mean the art is just stellarly top notch. Her like the animation she has for finishing is so fucking hot. Like it's so good. This is just someone who knows what they're doing, and they've done a really great job. I really expect great things from Nagatoro, especially if she targets other characters. Like, I don't say this lightly, and I don't say this as like a challenge, but I think get her up to about three thousand lines, which is not that hard if you you know go out and target a shitload of characters with opinions and thoughts. And I think you'd be. I think this is a row one character we're looking at. Like, I think she can beat Natsuki. Like, honestly, yeah. like if you just go in and do like do the business i i think you'll get there like i think she's just phenomenal and getting her to interact with her characters is really the heart of all this otherwise she kind of like it is great if you play her on her own but you you really need to derive value from her by targeting other characters otherwise just fantastic just a plus work there was uh an entry on the feedback poll a response that said i like putting like dawn and natsuki and shara <laughs> And like Vina and Monica and, all, and Tharja and all these characters together on one table, so their dialogue to the player makes the least sense possible. <laughs> and that holds true for. It's like how do you how do you know? I remember like Nagatoro. how do you reconcile being the main character and the senpai of all these different characters in these different universes? Natsuki has some targets about this for like um, for for like Lara Shell. I think she does to like Nagatoro now too, but it's just. That kind of shit is just funny as fuck to me. I, I don't really care if you're like, oh, like if you're like two Squirrel Girl characters, like there, feasibly you could both know the same guy, right? But I, I don't know. This is just excellent. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I don't really. I don't need to. I don't need to praise Nagatoro again. But this is obviously a, a, a guy, you know, who who came in and 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 took 
our advice seriously and, and said like, this is how the character looks. This is the canon animation and art style. This, this is the canon portrayal. I'm going to get it right. And he got it right. He got it right the first time. And everything kind of falls out from that. Once the model looks right, you can, you can do weird shit like the noodle arms because everything else just falls into place. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, it's, all, it's all about having that good foundation. Yeah. Anyway, in terms of like actually playing her on a table... I mean, this is definitely not my kind of character. I don't like the the sort of needy, overly yeah. player focused types. I'm, I'm, that niche exists and is good, and it's okay, especially for like a really like fun, expressive character like this. But just like yeah. in general, like for table presence, she's at an eleven, and everyone else is at a five. Yeah, she has a lot of presence. That's oh yeah. That's it's like she is. She's always shouting. <laughs> I, I can't help but feel that would be extremely grating for everyone else at the table that she's like constantly shouting and insulting this one specific person this poor mute individual who's <laughs> just sitting there and taking it it's like you stupid bastard everyone's just kind of looking around like do you know this boy <laughs> like, do you know this girl are you friends are you okay player yeah, do, do you need help, help? Do we? I feel like that's like a Leon thing of just like, who is this like fucking child and player? Do I need to call the cops? Because like, I can't help you here. Huh. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> yeah, so I just like picture, maybe try to picture the volume a little bit and try mm-hmm. to bring it down occasionally. She, isn't, she can be insulting without always shouting. Like there is, there's always like every other line, she's like in all bold calling you a virgin. It's like, well, you know, I'm playing a porn game on the internet, so. So you're you're not probably wrong. I, I guess that I guess you got a pretty fair shot at that. But uh, nice. Let's see. A very very immature. Yeah. Other notes. Very immature and like jealous around like other people stripping, like you know, like big breast reveals and stuff like that, which is good. And I and I'd like to see that explored more because that gives her a little extra something than just like hyper fixating on the player. Kind of like a weak point almost, like that that turns it around. Yeah, yeah. It's just I mean she does that well already. Yeah, but just like more of that because again it's it's tough to it it really in my opinion at least it gets it gets to be a little too much when you're constantly talking about someone. Whose, whose turn it is not. Right. I think, like, she targets... Uh, I'm looking at her character right here. She targets uh, Mario Setagaya, uh, a little bit of Maya, and some darkness and some Hutao. I, I think that's good. Like Maya? Like, like, I think, like, that we're all gonna... Oh, what? well, it's just replies, I think. Yeah, I, I think, like, what, what we're gonna say here that's just good advice to anyone is, like, I think, like, you nailed it. I think the core of this character is just so strong that, you know, she could be a row one contender given up lines. And the way you get there, you know, by and large, is, like, interacting with other characters. And I think just, like, like if you look at her data, like, the metadata, her notes are really good. There's a lot for people to target about her that aren't just about bullying player, but because, like, that's such, like, a core conceit of who she is as a person, it... it you know, it's just something to keep in mind. I think, like, having her interact normally with other characters is a good thing. Or just, like, you know, being jealous of, like, the, you know, the big titty goth GF. So, cool. Yeah, she's great. Excellent, yeah, excellent. Do, do a little bit more of, like, her being sporty. Yeah. And just, like, her school life. I think just, like, having her, like, I think, like, the, the fa- like factually, if you're playing with, like, Nagatoro, probably good odds that you're going to get played with other... Um, schoolgirl types so targeting those is a really good idea especially for the ones that are the the clingy jealous types yeah it's good it's a good it's a good thing tharja isn't like being updated anymore because i can only imagine the threats she would make oh god (laughs) don't i just want to see like nagatoro like we're gonna we're gonna be moving into ensemble stars here in territory like oh boy um, anyway, so that's, I mean, good characters. Like, honestly, like, this cast was super strong. Like, lots of really phenomenal characters. Nor, sorry we didn't get to Dunban, but we gotta be generous okay. to our... I'm, I'm, gonna, cool. I'm gonna say right now, like, I feel like I could cover my thoughts on Dunban pretty quickly. I don't know if you could. 
Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to knock it out. I feel like I could make make it in just a minute. Cool. Wibbly, Wibbly, you know, Wibbly uh, how are you feeling about that? I'll let you guys, you guys go for it. I'll take your thoughts. You probably have uh, thought uh, thought over more. I'm still catching up on the testing roster. Yeah, um, I think I, I really liked on Ben. I think he's kind of like in the same vein as like, how do I put this? Like, I like the fact that he's kind of smooth, but still rough around the edges. Like, he's he presents like a very similar character to someone like Leon or Jim, but with a little bit more refinement and a little more like overt heroism to it. So he's kind of like the good. He's from uh, he's from Xenoblade, by the way. Kind of looks like a Kingdom right. Hearts character. Yeah, he's he's kind of like anti like Twisted Fate in some ways, which is a good thing. But, like, I definitely think that, like, if you're one of the ones... Not a sleaze bag. Yeah, he's cool. I really like him. I think he's going to leave, like... He's the kind of character that, like, you want him to go out and target a bunch of female characters sort of thing and just have that interaction. Like, I know Napsu's going to really like this character which against a chance to play him. So I'm... I'm enthusiastic. Like, I don't have anything, like, super critical other than just it's, like, the art's good. I think it's a little early in, like, the dialogue phase. But it'll be interesting to see when he has like more to say to various targets. I want to see how he interacts with like Maya and like Nami and like the you know the jet set of the world. Like that's really exciting. He's, to me. he's he's got some targets. He's got some interesting targets that I I definitely want to reply to. Good. Cool. So he's good in that sense. But yeah, so yeah, mm-hmm. I don't I don't want I don't want Nord to feel like we're trying to rush through this to just to not no. just to check him off. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about him next time as well. But mainly, I just wanted to say like. It was because like what He's I good. wanted to say about him is pretty similar to what I said about uh, Alloy. I keep mentioning him in relation to her, yeah, where he's got like, the same sort of problem. Where you know this is like an RPG character, so you mostly see him like being serious and fighting and like like with a sword and like being composed and professional. And now he's in this like really casual sexual social situation, which is just very different. And you know, and he's not doing any of those things. So what is he doing? He wasn't like completely disinterested, but it, it was also it seemed kind of like back and forth. Where like sometimes he was kind of into it, but it it also it just felt like you know you gotta you gotta take a step out there. Maybe I think some a lot of writers just don't want to do this with male characters, but you just gotta be able to to nail down like this is what he's into, and you just gotta go for it. I played him with like Nico Robin, and Nico Robin said that she like she was into him like the like a professional mature warrior. Type with a beard, apparently, is what she's into. And it's like, if she can do that, then he's got to respond in kind. He's got to be like, you know, what kind of girl is he into? Was, is he a cradle robber? Was he all over Nagatoro? I don't know. <laughs> like, Hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Is he a Namasp type? Was he doing air combos? I think that's like always something that's like really interesting with these kind of like, you know, 20 something, 30 something dudes. It's like, how do you just react to this like, school girl at the table because like i don't know like i'm i'm in my 30s and if you're like oh yeah 18 year olds are like legal i'm like well yeah but like they look like fucking children dude i'm like not there for that i mean he doesn't even he doesn't even come from like earth you know he's like from this right. fantastical like half medieval half, oh yeah i guess, I guess that's fair i guess that's fair yeah half sci-fi world so like what is the culture what are the yeah, expectations what do you do with that you make some shit up like you gotta do something oh yeah actually that's yeah, actually, that's incredibly interesting. Like, that's a really cool topic. It's it's just it's just like alloy. Like, if there's nothing there, then just make some shit up. Like, just do something. Yeah, dude. Seriously, just like fucking be the change you want to see in the world, and the change is just like defining cultural characteristics. Easy peasy. Yeah, just like what does he like? Who does he like? Who does he want to fuck? Does only one of his balls work? Just like his arms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other little things I just want to quickly note. Um, the arm, like his injured arm, like when it's still clothed, there's not a like there's not a lot of like visual indication that something's wrong with it. It's just kind of like it's not really limp. It's like kind of bent a little bit. I don't really know what it's supposed to look like, but I I feel like you could do a little bit more to show that like he can't really move it at all because you know like limp arms have a certain look to them where you know there, there's no like tension or or any feeling. Uh, he kind of used a, a couple poses like rubbing his neck a little bit too much. And I think he's got a little bit of the lower dump problem, especially on like the strip lines. I always feel like strip lines just really aren't a great time to talk about the lore. I don't. It's it's hard to say what, exactly what you should be talking about. But yeah, that's that's my criticism too. 
But yeah, you don't want to be like giving a museum tour. Well, it's like where do you put it, right? Because like you you put it, you can't like make them all targeted lines, right? You can't put them on the hand lines, but you can't put them on stripping. So it's like you you can. It, it's, I feel like you can do war with like those lines if it's in a situation where it's naturally part of the conversation. But you know, that's that's what, that's what I mean. That's right. why I say put them on targets. Put the lore in yeah. targets where people would ask about it. But you can't like always do that. Oh, that's oh, you meant like generic strip lines. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, he's good. He's on the right path. Like I think I agree with Spin Ons Chris there. I think that like when he's stripping it can be a little lore dumpy, but you know, I do think having him have some opinions on the people that are stripping at the table. Like he does, but they're mostly just like, ah yes. How excellent kind of thing. Maybe, maybe he's super into into male dom and he wants to dump all his lore onto darkness darkness's <laughs> eager chin. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't know. It could be anything. He's got to, he's okay. got to train his his left handed swordsmanship, and here's a a, a big uh, panting meat meat shield, big panting punching bag ready to go. Maybe they're a match made in heaven. Yeah. Maybe he can he can bite her neck and call her La Latina. Enjoy the, <laughs> you know, enjoy. It was great to have you on, Wibbly. Thanks for coming back. Uh, looking for like I really enjoy what you're doing with darkness. I look forward Thank to you. more Mega Mean lines as well. Yes. Please, you know, don't. Neglect the uh, the usurpation that occurred there. For some context, for those of you that might not know, um, I was going to work on Megamine as a character for a long time. Uh, Wibbly, as a completely novice writer, enters like this uh, anonymous construction contest, picks Megamine, and I'm like, yeah, fucking go for it. And so everyone's like, oh, it's Namasp. This is Namasp character. Namasp <laughs> is definitely, it's just like some random fucking guy. So I'm really proud of Wibbly for just belting it out. Yeah, thank you. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, like a uh, great cast. I, I had a lot of fun uh, having you on again, man. Yeah, sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks again to Matt. Thanks, thanks again, Wibbly. Is there anything either of you two want to say as as uh, Solit- Solitaire is begging and pleading up for us to end the recording? Go go sponsor the characters uh, that are up for sponsorship. Uh, if you got feedback on this cast, you know, please by all means just like call us out for it in the podcast channel. I, I think all the characters we talked about today have some very promising uh, futures out of them. Just keep 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 developing them. Yep, yep. Cool. All right. No one, no one will ever understand the love that I feel for Maya Gisborne. <laughs> the pain, the aches, the, <laughs> the yearning, and the urinating. Until next time. So, all right, we're this episode like okay, uh, cutting. Okay, so let's take like a five minute break. When we come back, we'll do darkness. We'll try and hit Nagatoro if we can. Um, otherwise, yeah, we'll we talk to, uh, to thirty nine after. Yeah, that sounds good. Both oh, there. Both their microphones are muted right now, so I, I have a quick announcement to make. I fucking love Maya. Oh, really? I would have never guessed. Have you have you have you ever seen the the extremely ancient like Naruto abridged? <laughs> Uh, no, I've seen YouTube uh, series. I've seen a variety of abridged. The one I saw the most of was the DBZ and Yu Gi Oh abridged. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, sure. I, I think Naruto abridged was just like little Karibo fucking around or whatever. Yeah, but uh, like a lot of the abridged series, though, in general, just are great from back then. Where it's just every line that every every time it cuts to Sasuke, it's just like no no one will ever understand the pain I feel. <laughs> That's that's just me. It's me with Maya. It's, this is no, um, no one will ever understand the love that I feel for this character. That's uh. That's it. Well, I you mean, could just cut. You just cut you, to me in my inner monologue. It's like these bitches don't know. <laughs> you may think you understand the depths, but you don't. I mean, the fact that you have a character like that is wonderful in itself some people never find their one favorite i must i must admit i have not covered my entire living space with maya wallpaper just Mm. yet 
but I have Bukake to a uh, quite a number of of novels <laughs> worth of lines. Yeah, that's fair enough. Into her, need to make a costume out of a docky and wear it. Hey, known Webley, welcome back. Hey, I, I never left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean in general? Oh, okay, yeah. To Spinati, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Words, words cannot express the joy I felt when Wibbly was not kill. Yeah. <laughs> Sam. I mean, so, so many, so, so many wonderful faces lost to the sands of time. Yeah. Cypher, Remilia, to, to get one back is truly well, a blessing. I want, want Remilia to come back next. I need Fischl to be done for my life to be complete. I want, I want Fischl and gone you. I just like, I need him. I need to bury my face in Fischl's eye patch. I don't know. Uh, okay. You and I, like, Span and I are, like, the opposite spectrum of, like, characters. Like, he likes the, like, the stoic, calm, collected, and I just like the fucking manic, like, psychotic energy. I just like girls with personality disorders. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I guess that, 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 tells, that says a lot about Napsu without saying anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've, you've, you've interacted with Napsu. It's, it's, it's not saying much. Anyway, that's going to be like, that's going to be a good episode title. There we go.